Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives in pleads for me. today let's go ahead and stand up as we continue in our worship um, in this place this, this is the day that you have made whatever comes I won't complain for all my hope is in your name and now your joy awaits my praise. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. When I 
was down, you brought me out, you set my feet on high ground. So here I stand, you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks, I give thanks for all. church, those of you who are here in person, and those are of you who are here with us virtually, we are glad to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and give praise to his name this morning. And that's why I have a can of beans. <laughs> My name is Ann Bayless, I'm the Spiritual Life Minister, and I am here to encourage you to bring something for the food pantry this coming month, and it's beans this month. I've been told it's canned vegetables for next month. You can drop them off in your way in the door because we believe that feeding the hungry is a part of who we are. We also think that that's a, a part of hospitality. And so as facets of hospitality, you will find in your pew a card. This is a connection card. We'd love to just connect with you. Uh, we would love to have your email. If you'd like to be on the weekly email, just put, put me down. If you would like to have a prayer request, we connect in prayer every week, every Wednesday night. You're welcome to do that with us, but you have to have the email to get the link. <laughs> but we will pray for you. And another thing that we've started in the past year is that we have a wonderful welcome and what are you, greet, meet, Teresa? Friend, share and invite has, is hosting a friends and family day here. Do you see these lovely cards? This is an invitation. We're gonna pass them out if you didn't get them. We want you to take a handful and invite your neighbors. There's a basket back there. If somebody back there, Ellen, will grab those. And we're just gonna pass them out. You all have homework assignments. <laughs> invite people to come and have a great day with us and bring your vegetables. And the children also may now be, dis uh, yes, here she goes. Uh, to the back, you can go to the back if you're 10 years and younger. We have a fantastic children's program going on, and they will not want to miss that. Let's join our hearts and minds together as we join together to serve the Lord. As we continue in our worship, let's stand as we praise God together.
Jesus, the only one who can ever save. Worthy of every breath we can ever breathe. Live for you. As we continue to prepare our hearts and our minds uh, for the communion and for the message we're about to receive, um, we're going to take a little moment today and just have a time of prayer and confession. Um, I'm going to read these words to you, and then there'll be a moment of silence uh, for you to have a personal time of prayer. Almighty God, we enter your presence humbly, aware that we approach you from a world that chooses to walk in darkness apart from you. Each one of us has ignored and even denied the enlightening power of Jesus Christ. We confess now our sins to you, God, of power and might. Penetrate our darkness by the power of Christ's light, that we may live in the joy of knowing and loving you and each other. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember. Redemption till your blood was filled for my ransom. Everything. 
thing I once held dear I count it all as loss And lead me to the cross Where your love poured out Bring me to my knees Lord, I lay me down Rid me of myself I belong to you about this body of believers here. Um, we love this church. This is, a, this is an amazing group of Christians. Um, it's the most diverse group of Christians that we've ever been a part of, um, such as Houston, such as inside the loop of Houston. Um, and everyone has been brought here from a different path, from a different upbringing, from, from a different experience. But God loves each one of us the exact same. It doesn't matter what we've done in our past. If we long for him, he longs for us. We read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for the, the sacrifice that you gave us and, and the, the eternal, eternal blessing of salvation that we have with you because of the, the sacrifice of your son. And we understand that sacrifice and the, the body that he broke and the, the blood that was shed for us. It's mornings like this that we want to focus on that and we want to praise you for, for what, we, what we have in store for us. And thank you so much for for humbly allowing your son to die on the cross for us. We pray this in Christ's name. If you'd please pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone is welcome to come up to the front for the table of communion. O oh, Father, kindness you have borne out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, you're my help in time of need. Lord, I can't help but see. And faithful you are. Oh, faithful. As we give thanks for the gifts that God has given to us, that we are able to give back to him in this place, let's stand as we sing this song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above you. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much, Jared and 
Helen and Harrison. Isn't it so nice to hear Helen's beautiful voice and Harrison's strong drumming? <laughs> Let's get them a hand. <laughs> Good morning, 1548 Heights, members and guests online and in person. Grace and peace to you in abundance. It's a great morning today at 1548 Heights. So many, so nice to see the usual smiling faces and many other guests here today who hope, we hope will come back again and again. At 1548 Heights, we're committed to the journey of spiritual transformation in Jesus Christ. Spiritual transformation is the process of being formed into the image of Jesus over time in community in the context of practices and rhythms and disciplines which allow God to shape us into Jesus' image. For God's glory, for the abundance of our own lives, and for the sake of the world. And one of those central rhythms of our lives of transformation in Jesus is our worship assembly and the communion and the singing and the prayers and the preached word and the fellowship. It's just wonderful to be here with you today. Today is Baptism Sunday at 1548 Heights. We schedule these about once a quarter just to help people have a sort of date to orient themselves towards uh, as a way to say, hey, if, if I feel ready to take this step of faith to be baptized into Christ, to signal publicly what I have decided privately, we want to invite you to do that. We've got the baptismal filled we, we don't have it filled every week because uh, we had to sort of uh, jerry-rig our baptismal, but we've got it filled today. And, and don't be worried if you, you know, you didn't plan this. It's very scriptural and biblical for sometimes people to sense the Spirit of the Lord leading them to do something they hadn't planned to do, such as to be baptized today. And we would love to help you with that. We're in the second week of a series on Paul's letter to the Colossians, the Christians in Colossae. And we've got a great uh, passage to look at today because it's about our walk with Jesus. Now, let me just start by asking, how many of you are walkers? You walk with purpose. You walk for exercise or you walk to clear your mind or you walk for other salutary benefits. I know Richard Box is an avid walker. I see him powering down and up 15, oh, or Heights Boulevard regularly. But uh, it's, a, it's a very um, uh, healthy practice for many people, and, and they've, beco- they've become in- passionate about it because uh, it's, it's so much a part of their well-being. Uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th century German philosopher, said, all truly great thoughts are conceived while walking. Soren Kierkegaard, the 19th century Danish theologian, said, above all, do not lose your desire to walk. Every day I walk myself into a state of well-being and walk away from every illness. I have walked myself into my best thoughts, and I know of no thought so burdensome that one cannot walk away from it. W.H. Davies, the 20th century Welsh poet, said, Now shall I walk or shall I ride? Pleasure responds ride, but joy responds walk. Noel Coward, the 20th century English playwright, said, I like long walks, especially when they are taken by people who annoy me. (laughs) And Ellen DeGeneres said, my grandmother started walking five miles a day when she was 60. She's 97 now, and we don't know where the heck she is. So, you know, walking uh, is, is, is kind of an adventure. But isn't it interesting, folks, isn't it significant that the early Christians, as they were sort of forming their vocabulary, chose the term walk to mean live. And so often in your English translations of the Bible, whenever you read, live this way, or as in Ephesians 4, 1, I urge you as as prisoners in the Lord to live worthily of the Lord, the word is walk, because Christians conceived of life with Jesus, discipleship in his name as a walk, and the early Christians 
uh, for a time, were called the way. The movement of followers of Jesus was called the way, meaning the journey, the road. So this connotation of walking is so paramount to the Christian life. And make this note, friends, and this is where your outline begins, which is on the back of the bulletin if you find that helpful to follow along. Jesus invites us to follow me. Jesus invites us to follow me. Jesus doesn't say, I will be on the top of this mountain. If you want to come to me, then come to me. Jesus says, follow me. And in fact, literally, Jesus walks through his ministry. Galilee, through Samaria, Judea, around Judea, back to Galilee. He's always walking. Cities, towns, everything between. Jesus is walking and invites others to follow him. I have been walking with Jesus 39 years now, ever since I was four. No, I'm just kidding on that one. Since I was 21, I'll go ahead and put it out there. You know how old I am? Oh, gosh. No. But, but, so, but I've lived in many different places, and, and I've done a number of things. So no matter where you are or what you're doing, you are, in a sense, in a walk with Jesus because that is what we do. We follow him. And today, we're going to look at Paul's prayer to the Colossian Christians. It's just such a beautiful prayer. He says, this is how I pray for you as kind of a description of our walk with Jesus. And so let's read Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. For this reason, since the day we heard it, and the word might be you, since the day we heard of you, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God, may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so our walk with Jesus, make this note, begins with our rescue and our transfer. The last thing we read in the passage is actually a description of the beginning of our walk. He has rescued us from the domain or the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This doesn't happen at the end of our walk because we've earned it, because we distinguish ourselves so much. This is the beginning of our walk. This is a sense, something has to do with what we're inviting people to do today if you haven't done it yet, to surrender to Christ's rescue of you signified in baptism. The word rescue here is the word in the Lord's prayer that we just said, do not lead me into temptation, but deliver me or rescue me from evil. It's the same word Paul uses in Romans 7 when he says, I tell you, I do things that I don't want to do, and then I don't do things that I do want to do. I don't know. There's something within me that can't get all this right. He says, who will rescue me from this body of death? There's that word. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord. In 1 Thessalonians 1.10, Paul writes, Jesus who rescues us from the coming death dead. And so, friends, as much as we like to think that sort of we come to Christ uh, up on our own volition and all that, there's certainly part of that, but make note, we are being rescued. We are not, uh, we're described as dead in our sins. That's, that's hard language. You know, we're dead in our sins. 
and, and, and Christ rescues us. Well, what are we being rescued from? From a Christless eternity? From self-centeredness, indulgence, worldly pursuits, all the things that sort of characterize uh, 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 what the Bible means when it talks about sin, which means we're in charge, deciding for ourselves how to run our life. Emptiness of life without a larger meaning, no transcendence or transcendent authority in our life. Isn't it interesting that when Paul writes, he has rescued us from the domain or the power of darkness. You know what that word is? Authority. He has rescued us from the authority of darkness. Let me tell you, we like to think we're, we're so, you know... Uh, uh, autonomous. I mean, no, we are outside of Christ. We are living in a kind of authority, and we don't even realize it—the authority of darkness. And he says, "He has rescued us from the authority of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son." Isn't that interesting? Transferred us. You, you, when you're transferred, you don't sort of make your way across. You are sort of moved from one to the other. The, the, the King James uh, in King's English renders this, he has translated us. Isn't that interesting? Translated us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Friends, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, one of the things we are doing is we're surrendering. We're surrendering our will. We're surrendering our life. We're surrendering our authority. And everything the Bible is telling us is you can be confident. You can trust in that surrender. It's, it's a faith. It's a faith leap, you know. It always is to surrender. But this is where our journey begins. And baptism signifies our willingness to be rescued and transferred our willingness to surrender ourselves. Well, this walk continues with growth and fruit. With growth and fruit. Read, read this next passage with me. He says, here's what we're asking. Here's what I'm asking when I pray for you. Asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So that, friends, always look for the so that, because here's the point. So that you may lead lives, and there's our word walk, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. Pause there. What does it mean to walk fully pleasing to the Lord? Here he's going to tell us. As you bear fruit in every good work and you grow in the knowledge of of God. So our journey, our walk with Jesus continues after our rescue and transfer with growth and fruit, bearing fruit in the world. That's why when we talk about being transformed into the image of Jesus, we say for the glory of God, for the abundance of our own lives, and for the sake of the world, for others. Jesus leads us into the lives of others. You know, I was reminded this week about the fruit that God is bearing through 1548 Heights. I'm just so um, thrilled with what I see and hear about. You know, we have these four mission partners that we have sort of pledged our uh, concentration towards, and we give them a tithe of our uh, offerings. And I got a card from... Barbara Allen, the executive director of Main Street Ministries, who's one of our four mission partners, she addresses this to me, uh, but she really means it to all of us, okay? She has the illusion that I'm in charge in some way, but she says, we are so thankful for the partnership with 1548 Heights, such incredible support financially and with incredible volunteers. Three volunteers from your church have given over 330 hours to support our mission. <laughs> That's G. Rim, Melissa Zenzitz, and Kelly Stewart, I believe. Is that right? Those three? Yeah. 
330 hours. These people work full-time jobs. In addition, the supply drive for getting ahead, participants, getting ahead as a program, filled up our cabinet and got us ready for our new workshop launches to serve more households on their path out of poverty. We, all, we are thankful for you and your congregation. So Main Street Ministries helps people move out of poverty, gives, uh, helps them get an ID, helps them get uh, skills training and life training. It's just a fantastic ministry. Bearing fruit. See, Christians are bearing fruit. 1548 is bearing fruit. Heights Interfaith Ministries Food Pantry that we're having the food drive for. You know, we've got people plugged in there on the board serving. Arms of Hope, ministry to single mothers and children throughout Texas. Got people working on that. Uh, we've got Mark and Allie Kaiser coming in on October, the weekend of October 30th. They, they uh, run the mission and the church in uh, Itu, Brazil, and they're going to be here sharing what they're doing, and we help to support them. And just fruit, bearing fruit and growing is such a beautiful thing. And let me tell you, friends, each of us, as we walk with Jesus, are called to grow in our knowledge of God, bearing fruit in every good work. And, and you know, I, I know that many of us, including me, often are, are kind of insecure uh, that we're actually bearing much fruit for God and for the kingdom of God. And, and I just want to tell you, you are. If you're making any effort, you are. God uses every bit of effort for his purposes and multiplies that stuff. Stop thinking all the things you don't do or the things you don't do as well as you think you should or as often as you think you should and run yourself down and say, every effort I make to glorify God and to follow Jesus faithfully Bear some fruit. And, and I don't mean to da- talk anyone down from maybe critically examining yourself. If you, if you need to do that and say, hey, I, do I need to sort of really uh, get real about my faith in Jesus and my walk with Jesus? I don't want to do that, you know, because I think that's from the Lord. But many of us need to realize that it's not what we don't do. It's not all the ways we fall short. It's what our effort can bring with God's help. I re- I've been reading Brennan Manning's book, um, The Ragamuffin Gospel, and you may have seen in our midweek newsletter that those are usually the quotes of the week, and I think the three or four of you who read that news- newsletter have seen those. But at any rate, he wrote this. The Lord is now calling us a second time, affirming us, encouraging us, challenging us, all the way into fullness of faith, hope, and love in the power of his Holy Spirit. Ignorant, weak, sinful people that we are, with easy rationalizations for our sinful behavior, we are being told anew in the unmistakable language of love, I am with you. I am for you. I am in you. I expect more failure from you than you expect of yourself. (laughs) Oh, man, I read that and I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and your grace. And I I just, I know all the ways I fall short. I know all the ways that my effort is not what I want it to be, but thank you that you use my effort. And, 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 And you expect the failure. You know, you're not surprised by that. Many of us, Expect that arrow to go up and to the right all the time. (laughs) Oh, gosh. That's why Paul says this in verse 11. Do we have that on the slide? May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father. So he's saying here, you're going to, you're going to have tough times. You're going to have terrible times. You're going to have times of loss, of weakness, of failure, of betrayal, of shame, of guilt. May you be able to endure being made strong 
in yourself? No. With all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience. What? While joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Thank you, Lord, that I am not alone in this failure. Thank you, Lord, that I am not alone in this struggle. Thank you, Lord, that I am not alone in this mess that I made or that came into me. I don't know. Thank you, Lord, that I can be strong in your power. And so our walk with Jesus begins with our rescue and our transfer. It continues with our growth and fruit, and it culminates in our inheritance. It culminates in our inheritance. Read verse 12 with me. Giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. That's referring to our future hope, our inheritance, eternity with Christ, heaven, uh, the full presence of God. It is our inheritance, our promised inheritance. Now, look at that word I, 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 I underlined and uh, bolded there. I mean, I did everything. I tried, to, I tried to put it in colors because that word only occurs twice in the New Testament. And it means to be made sufficient, to be made qualified. And let me tell you, it's not because we, we just distinguish ourselves as honor roll participants on our walk with Jesus. It's because Christ has made us sufficient in him. By surrendering ourselves to him, we have been made sufficient, enabled to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Look at the other time this is used, which I thought I had here. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Angela was going to read that for me. No, I'm just kidding. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Such is the confidence that we have through Jesus Christ toward God. Not that we are confident of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our confidence or sufficiency is, made, is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. This is the Apostle Paul saying, I don't have any sufficiency in myself. My sufficiency is from Christ. And so, friends... Our walk with Jesus culminates with our inheritance for which we have been made sufficient by Jesus Christ, not by ourselves. I want you to say that with me. We are sufficient in Jesus Christ. Say that with me. We are sufficient in Jesus Christ. Now say that about yourself. I am sufficient in Jesus Christ. Say that. I am sufficient in Jesus Christ, not because of the way I live, not because of how many times I'm in church. That's part of the rhythms and the practices, but the sufficiency comes from Jesus Christ and surrendering ourselves to him and what he's done for us on the cross, rescuing us from the authority of darkness and transferring us into the kingdom of his own, of God's beloved son. And so, our journey culminates in this inheritance. And listen to what Paul says, the inheritance of the saints in the light. You know, when the Bible talks about our inheritance, the Bible talks about things like a, a new heaven and a new earth in Revelation. The Bible talks about things like being fully known by God and knowing God fully as he knows us. You don't see in the Bible things like, you know, uh, uh, 72 virgins or all our sensual and, and worldly pleasures given to us. No, no, because God is shaping us and moving us into the image of his son. I don't want to have all my dreams realized in heaven. If that's where, what I get in heaven, because I know some of my dreams aren't worthy, all right? And so I want God to shape me 
into the image of his son and experience that fully in my inheritance. And so let me ask you this question, friends. Do you know what will happen when you die? Do you know what will happen when you die? It sounds like a cheap shot, doesn't it? Sounds like kind of underhanded. You know, the preacher's trying to be manipulative. That is a legitimate question because uh, Paul says, my prayer for you is that you will know you've been made sufficient in Jesus Christ for the inheritance of the saints in the light so you can be confident of what will happen when you die. You will be with God for eternity. You will be with Christ for eternity. You can live into that inheritance. That's what a living hope is. Live into that inheritance. Angela and I have some friends who for 30 years have known they were going to get a big inheritance. And you know what? They lived into it. They were able to live confidently in a way that you wouldn't if you didn't know that. And so Christians know that. We have this inheritance waiting for us if we will surrender ourselves to Christ and trust in what he's done for us. And so, friends, we're invited to walk with Jesus, to walk with Jesus, to surrender to his rescue and transfer into his kingdom, to walk such that we grow in our knowledge of God and bear fruit in the world for the abundance of our own lives, for the sake of others, for the glory of God, and that we live into the inheritance, the culmination of our lives. Friends, embrace the walk. Take the walk. It, this is the walk that God invites us to. And I want to pray for us now. And maybe you, you say, well, I haven't really surrendered to Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. And I haven't really given my life over to him. I've, 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 I've made some steps and everything. But this could be the day of salvation for you. Jesus says to Zacchaeus, Luke 19, today is the day of salvation. You didn't know when I came to dinner it was going to be that, but today it is. And, and, and we would love to welcome you into the family of faith and celebrate with you and help you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. We're going to sing a song after I pray. Trust and obey. Listen to the words of this. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who trust and obey when we walk with the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that our sufficiency is in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and not in ourselves. And help us trust that every little bit of effort we give, you use to bear fruit. And we rejoice in that. And thank you for our rescue and transfer in Jesus Christ. We've been taken out of that domain of darkness, the authority of darkness, which is really our own selfishness and self-absorption and brought into a new kingdom. Thank you, Lord. We embrace this walk. We take this walk with Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. If you'd like to be baptized, just talk to me after the service, and we'd love to help you with that. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Oh, trust and no way, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a sign or a tear and abide while we trust and obey oh trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey then in fellowship we will sit at his feet 
again, Jared and Helen and Harrison. Very quickly, fixing your mind, Friends and Family Day, October 16th. October 16th. We'll be telling you more about that. Pick up some cards as you leave that you can give to your friends and family. Say, we'd love to have you here on the 16th. Friends, may the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today. God bless you. So this purchase by his blood.